I was eight years old when I, um, I was first uh, I uncovered accidentally um, a pornography stash. And, um, you know, at eight years old, um, didn't really realize it then, but just really didn't have a box for that. Um, you know, nowhere to really put that, no, no way really to process that. With my um, religious upbringing, um, you know, just felt very um, ashamed, very guilty, uh, dirty, um, and definitely kept it a secret. When I met Trey, he was smart and very intellectual. He was um, very much, he loved sports, you know, football. We'd play frisbee on the quad at Sanford, yet he was very passionate about God, and I love that. And I really felt that um, Eventually, I would overcome the struggle on my own, and nobody'd ever have to know the difference. And my my secret would be would be safe, and my pristine, perfect reputation that I had managed for so many years would would be intact. I always felt like I was going to marry somebody in the ministry. My dad had been in ministry, and a lot of my family members were in ministry, and it just kind of uh, was in me. I had planned to tell her about uh, my struggle, um, and it, I was very scared because I knew she loved who she saw me to be and who she, who she thought I was, um, but it was going to be a risk to share the secret that nobody else knew. There was a family member that had um, kind of, our stories were similar, I was a good athlete, everything had always come easy, and he had, uh, he had actually had an affair. And I remember Melody saying, I'm afraid that you're going to be like my cousin and your rebellious period is going to be after we get married. And when she said that, um, I remember just saying, well, I can't tell her. There were times throughout the course of our marriage where he just seemed like he wasn't, wasn't here, wasn't present. And we would talk, but it just wasn't that intimacy that I found. And I, about year seven, I just remembered thinking to myself, is this all that marriage, you know, kind of the death of a dream, I guess, a little bit? Is this all that marriage is cracked up to be? For a lot of people, they go to chat rooms, and it started innocent enough with sports chat, um, a big SEC football fan. and. And it started there. But what I began to find, uh, really for the first time in my life, it was an opportunity for me to get to know people and them to get to know me with no pre preconceived notion. Unfortunately, they did um, go from the uh, just the sports stuff to more local chat rooms and then more of a, of a sexual explicit nature. Ultimately, um, in 1997, had my, uh, my first one night stand with someone I didn't even know her last name. It wasn't until um, my kids were five, four, two years old, and six months that um, that I had come to to terms with Trey. I had gotten into his wallet to get some money out for something, and he I found a receipt in his wallet um, that were for some items. I think it was flowers and chocolates. I can still uh, hear um, her sobbing and just this almost a wailing. And just it, it, it ripped my heart out. And Trey proceeded to tell me that he had had, over the course of two years, he had had seven one night stands. And um, what, do you, what do you do with that? I began to learn that there is a pain that heals. And my entire life, um, any hint of pain. I would run to the medicine. In my case, it was pornography. For some people, it may be alcohol. For some people, it may be work. You know, whatever we use in our life to make life work on our terms. The, the healthier that I got, the more that it took pressure off. Trey's got to be this person for me. Trey's got to do this thing for me to set me at ease. And it was me, through a lot of pain and, and, and healing, that God allowed me to, to get to a place where I was comfortable in my skin. And that was, that was the big turning point in recovery. Uh, and, and understanding that I was worth recovery, that I had value, and um, that God had created me for a much larger story than the small story that I was settling for. Rebuilding trust was seeing Him in a different light. It was also me becoming a different person and then fleshing that out together. There is hope. For those who are struggling with sexual addiction, um, this cannot be overcome in isolation. Knowing yourself and being able to, 
to stand up for myself. I don't have to wait for him to stand up for me or to 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 lead or show up or whatever. I can say what I think and I can say what I feel. And it's very freeing in a very healthy, you know, healthy sense. For those who are struggling and maybe you believe some of the lies that you're the only one or nobody will understand, uh, there are groups that can help uh, to connect with other uh, individuals who, um, who are on the path to recovery.